If you want to hear about real hypnotic manipulation, just listen to them. At the time that I was going through these techniques, I didn't realize I was being hypnotized because I had a, a preconceived notion in my mind that hypnosis involved somebody swinging a watch in front of your face and then putting you into a deep sleep and then making hypnotic suggestions to you. But none of that happened in Scientology. There was no watch swinging. I never went into a deep sleep. I was conscious of everything that was going on. I never lost memory of anything that happened. Basically, the way I looked at it was all I was doing was with doing simple techniques that involved talking to another person. It never occurred to me that this could be a very subtle form of hypnosis. Okay, Funk, you twitched your mouth. Start. All over the world, people are being put through this right now by Scientology trainers. Okay, Funk, you gave a big sigh. Okay, now what, what, what's actually occurring here as this, as this happens is the, the control is starting to go in, where there's one person starting to control that your emotions, your movement, etc., and your willingness to be controlled. And you're going to finally have to be able to do this for two hours without a twitch, without a movement, without anything else. What I'm aware of is when I stop my attention from moving and I totally focus upon you, I begin to go into a trance mm -hmm. because my conscious mind is looking for movement. Right. But it's being fixed and held. Now, we're going to do this drill <clears throat> until um, your tone 40 is totally in. Okay, now this is done screaming, so it's going to get a lot okay. of the camera. You're a student. Start. Stand up! Take down in that chair! Flunk, you failed to acknowledge. Okay, start. Stand up! Thank you! Sit down in that chair! Thank you! Stand up! So, Robert, the what? Now that, my friends, is a sample of what of the madness that you're going to be witnessing me and my co-host, who I'll be bringing on shortly, Marcus Sawyer. That's what we're going to be demonstrating today. And those are the training routines. And the reason we spent so much, uh, this is video number two on it. Please avail yourself of the first one because we're picking up from right where we left off. But the reason we spent so much time on this is because this is the fundamental drill that a Scientologist is introduced to early to put them in a suggestible state and also practice throughout a Scientologist career to keep them in said suggestible state. So as we work ourselves through these things, I'd like to bring on my lovely co-host, Mr. Marcus Sawyer. How are you doing today, brother? I'm good. How are you? Not too shabby, man. A little intimidated to do these drills, and we've said we're not going to push each other's buttons or re-stimulate the audience, right? But right. it's going to be interesting going through this shit, brother. We already like, have. You already have. This is shown the video. People are like, what the hell is this? This is sick, crazy shit. But there's a method to the madness, and it sold us a communication course. That was kind of a behind the scenes with Jesse Prince and Stacey Brooks. And we're going to show you some more video of them as we also demonstrate it. But that's the wackiness of it. But what's the purpose of these freaking things? So let's see. We're going to... Indeed. I guess I'll show people the bridge, Marcus, so they know what we're doing. They can get um, oriented. To the bridge. Okay. So Where's that confounded bridge? All right. Stand by. So this is the very first, well, one of the first things that you do as a Scientologist. Because like I said, it's one of the most powerful tools to kind of get you to accept the rest of Scientology. And let me see. Communication drills. Oh, there's so many tabs. I don't think I can actually pull it up. Well, we, we pulled it up in the first one. Let's just say that at the very bottom of the bridge, right after something called the purification rundown, which we also covered, is something called the TRs and objectives. In layman's terms, the training routines are what we're going to show you. And the objective process is meaning where you're kind of directed around a room to touch various objects and get in communication with the physical environment, or so they say. That's since been replaced by David Miscavige with something called the survival rundown, 
which is nothing but these objective processes. And it's also one of the first steps on the training side of the bridge. Um, I hope I didn't lose people with all the nomenclature, but let's just say it's at the very beginning and they try to get you on this as quickly as possible. So we're gonna show, um, we're gonna show Stacy Brooks and Jesse Prince. Did you want, um, back in the day in the eighties, they were breaking this stuff down and we're gonna start right where we left off with TR zero bulbate. And then we'll show you what Stacy has to say about it, what Scientology says they are, and then we'll demonstrate them and show you how this madness works. And we'll show you the method in the madness. So here we go. This is um, TR one. Actually, Marcus, do you think, well, they explain it. I'll, I'll show, you we, the show you a disclaimer in the beginning. Disclaimer? Yeah. Did, did that run? I didn't see for the very, from the very beginning when you. Oh, it did. Okay. Were you okay, not, good. you didn't have well, your TRs in and you weren't paying attention? Dude, I'm talking to the people. 20 seconds that thing was running, dude. Okay, fine. Just kidding. I got that. Okay. You already got your TRs and I like it. So here's TR1, guys. Once a person has um, passed TR0. They're ready to move on to the next training routine, which is TR0 bull baited. On TR0 bull bait, the coach attempts to distract the student or break concentration in any way. And if he does that, then the person, the student is given a flunk and the drill is started again until the person can sit there having fingers pointed very close to his eye, being yelled at, screamed at, uh, jokes, whatever, until he can just sit there and not react to it. Now in this drill, Jesse's going to be the coach and I'll be the student. So Jesse's going to bull bait me until I can sit here comfortably, no matter what he does. Ready? Yeah. Start. You have an eye tick. <laughs> Flunk, you flinched. Start. You have an eye tick. <laughs> Flunk, you flinched. Start. You have an eye tick. Okay, flunk. You weren't as bad as you were before. You're getting better at it. Ready? Start. You have an eye tick. Oh, you really think you're smart now, huh? You really? Okay. Flunk for smiling. Start. Oh, you really think you're smart now, huh? You really think you have it together, huh? Why are you eye jumping around like that? Uh huh. <laughs> Fuck <for> smiling. <laughs> okay. Start. Oh, Lord, my head is hurting so bad. Ah! Pay attention when I'm speaking. Mm. Mm. Fuck for smiling. Start. Hmm. Mm, look at you. Looking like some bedpan in a mental institution. Well. Uh, ah. Plug <laughs> for smiling. Start. Mm, you really think you got it together now, don't you? <laughs> Be careful. Be careful, I could be dangerous. Is that your mother over there? Is that your mother in the corner? What's your mom doing over there? She needs to be home. Oh, goodness gracious, the dog is eating the cat. See? The dog's eating the cat. Okay, that's a pass. Okay, there you go. And now, Marcus, before you jump in, because I'm sure you want to say a lot on that, because we're going to talk about how it gets more brutal. And this is also going to be the only one we're going to describe, guys. We're not going to actually act this particular one out, because we'll explain in a minute why that is. But let me show you what actually is happening here. What is the point of this? You know, they sell, they tell you that you're signing up for a communication course, and um, it's anything but. So here's what Scientology says, right? This is the PR line that you can find on their website. And it sounds innocent enough. And it looks like if you don't know anything about the freaking mind control trap you just step, stepped into, this is a fairly reasonable explanation for what you're about to get involved in. So they say the communication training drills, that's the TRs, training routines. Now that you have discovered the components of communication and its formula, 
And by the way, guys, this is riffing off of the ARC triangle. One of the first concepts that you learn about is affinity, reality, and communication. And the idea is that if you increase any one point on that area, for example, if you increase the affinity with someone that you're talking to, the other parts of the triangle will automatically go up. So the communication will also increase with said person that you're talking to, as well as the reality or the things that you have in common. That's the theory, by the way. And it's kind of an NLP or neuro linguistic programming manipulation tool. So once you learn about the ARC triangle, that's what they're talking about, about learning the components of understanding. They go, how do you put into practice what you have just studied on the communication formula? And here's where the communication course kicks in. How can you learn to apply the laws of communication so easily and naturally that they almost seem to be a part of you? Everything in Scientology becomes a part of you, such as the drilling, the monotonous repetition, and burning this tech into your every being of your of your body, right? Isn't it would say 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 something like that, Marcus, in the freaking training? How in fact do you become how in fact do you become effective in communication? In Scientology, there are drills that enable anyone to improve his or her his or her skill of communication. A drill is a method of learning or training where you do something over and over again until you are very familiar with it and can do it well and easily. So that's their explanation. And here's what the um, here's what they're actually doing. So briefly, we um, let me make sure that that screen's showing. Can you see that? Okay, Marcus, you can kind of read it a little bit. Yeah, I see it. So this is a reference that is in the description box, and it's a fantastic reference on these TRs that you can refer to after the video, and it's called Scientology Training Routines, and it's a critical review by Perry Scott, just breaking down each one of these. We covered OT, TR0 last time, we covered TR0, and now we're going into bull bait. So besides the fact that it's often a lot more brutal here's what's really going on with the bull bait and here's the purpose of it to set you into this strange new reality called scientology tr0 bull bait sit with eyes open for hours not moving laughing or twitching quote confronting coach while he or she in every way tries to make you react now bull bait tr0 with i don't even want to read that bull bait is the next step on the gradient remember everything's done on a gradient so you're led like a boiling a frog in hot water into eventually falling for the Xenu story. It's all done slowly, slowly, slowly. So here, the suggestive mind in training routine zero accepts contrary data and is not allowed to protest or even acknowledge what is happening. At this point on the gradient, turning off your mind is mandatory. You will not progress past TR zero bull bait by thinking about what your tormentor is saying or doing. You must sit passively, wondering what the hell the new attack will be used that will make you flunk and flunk was said is said with shock wow. and, and awe pretty crazy right no so, i just got triggered mm -hmm. when you said flunk i thought i flunked something <laughs> dude i understand that just saying that word marcus yeah, like maybe it brings it all back what what did i do <laughs> I, i'm sorry it's like, it's like terror mode at the church guys because we're so used to this word flunk is done like i said with shock and awe it's done with malice of forethought and it's loud and it, it, you just yeah. constantly like shocking your poor Fuck! You know. yeah exactly yeah. i remember this exercise as being both degrading and crude the job of the quote coach is to find your quote buttons those phrases and movements which will cause you to react the pattern suggested by the staff coach centered on sexual perversion for the men now you wonder why pedophilia and other sexual perversion is rampant in the cult and body part criticism for the women some of the gender neutral abuse centered on suppressive person mock-ups. That means pretending like you're a suppressive. Oh, you want to be in Scientology, right? You, you push these people's buttons so that they won't react to somebody challenging them on Scientology later. Attempting to dredge up memories of past wrongs to gain a reaction. In fairness, it was not all abusive. Sometimes a good joke could produce a flunk. Sorry to restimulate you, Marcus. That's okay. I was prepared for it that time. <laughs> Almost done with this gibberish, and then we can start explaining this thing. Integral with this exercise is a Dianetics infomercial about your, quote, case and reactive mind. It was your reactive mind that was the problem, the reason you had all these, quote, buttons. So Hubbard, under the guise of helping you communicate better, slips in a demonstration that you're seriously screwed up and you need auditing. Here's where the bait and switch kicks in. You go in for a communication course, and now you're being introduced to this thing called auditing, which you now need. Auditing is the real moneymaker for Scientology. So to save staff expense, Hubbard, and I quote, make money, make more money, get others to make more money. You eventually become a coach in this exercise. Since I couldn't remember any good jokes, I eventually became abusive to produce a flunk. To this day, I am ashamed of the things I said 
to one young woman. Me too, and I have a story about that, which is why we're not going to demonstrate this particular one. Hubbard's objective for TR0 bull bait is not about being able to confront through your case. It's about unquestioning acceptance of information. Turn on your TR0 bull bait, get your case under control, and let's talk about how Scientology is going to help you, is what Scientology is actually saying. Don't think too hard about how strange this all sounds because it's just your case talking. If you have any problems confronting Scientology, it's because your case, and this proves your need for Scientology technology, classic circular reasoning. Marcus, do you want to explain why we're not going to lay in each other and how Jesse's and Stacy's explanation, well, creepy enough, uh, how, what did you envision? What did you see at the mission when you were doing endless hours of TR zero bull bait and how brutal did it actually get? Well, which question do you want me to answer first? <laughs> One question, like what did you, okay, what did yeah. you observe? And then how brutal were some of the things that you saw? How about that? Uh, so. Well, I, I kind of want to answer the other question. About, sure. About Whatever you want. Jesse first. Sure. And uh, Jesse and Stacy. Stacy, right? Stacy Brooks, right. Stacy Brooks. And she was entangled with the Lisa McPherson stuff. So one of the things that I want to say is that when they produced this video, it had to, it was definitely had to be produced a specific way. And they, and, and Jesse would have known from his, his, his experience on staff and in the Sea Org and in the executive strata, strata is what they call it, the strata, the upper echelon, um, the gradients to to make people understand what it is. You know, if he's leaving and he's, it's kind of like Chris Shelton does, where he, you know, he did the data series and he breaks things down in in certain in ways for people to understand on a gradient. Now, you and I understand immediately what that means, but if you what a term that people probably don't understand or don't aren't familiar with is out gradient. And this can happen in anything. It's just a term in Scientology. But uh, if we start talking Scientologies to each other, which we have done on our broadcast before, <laughs> people are like, Wait, what? Huh? Because they don't know the language. But this video is showing how the TRs are slowly on a gradient getting a person to 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 be willing to interact with other people uh in ways that would cause a physical or emotional reaction and to completely have n none of it you get flunked for that so the from however, what it was, eight minutes in the video where they do the bull bait. And uh, he's like, you know, the dog's eating the cat. Look at that. The dog's eating the cat. Anything that you can do on, on, on these small reactionary levels that we all have as human beings uh, is fair game in TR0 bull bait. But in the video, they used a very mild gradient. So because think about at the time when they published this and were releasing this and who they were trying to reach, if it was people in power who were you know, people who have influence, opinion leaders and stuff like that, they don't want to show the worst of it because then it'll look uh, overdone and ridiculous. And, and uh, because Scientology is recognized as an official church in the United States, you, there are just certain things religiously you can't, you know, people aren't going to take seriously or bring it to someone's attention in, in, a, in a place where it would really need it be needed, where recently there has been some attention with Danny Man, with the Danny Masterson stuff. There are things that go on in the church that people just simply ignore. And it's this is this is what they were doing, what, in the 1990s. And they're showing you how you do it. Is incredibly mild gradient, and what and, and now that's a good segue into the mission, and 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 your experiences and my experiences with TR zero bull bait because the gradient for us and the gradient for anybody who's continuing Scientology continually goes upward, and you run out of buttons 
those those buttons that she that he was pushing are simple basic buttons to get you just like I don't know how to say je ne sais quoi a uh willingness to experience whatever is around you and accept that's right marcus i think the phrase was being able to be one of the things that we're taught in scientology as a policy was be willing to experience anything right yeah angela clark said it perfectly take it to take it so exactly how to both give abuse and take it you're learning how to be controlled and control other people. So it seems like a fair Absolutely. enough give and take. Again, it's under the guise of communication. And if you don't know what's happening, it can actually be fun, as you're gonna see. We're gonna read some gibberish from Alice in Wonderland, and <laughs> you could start to get giddy and just think that you're also getting over your buttons too, right, Marcus? I'll give you an example. I um, I talked about this on one of the videos. I laid into an old lady because I wanted to be good at this, and I also thought it was helping out you know, my acting, which right. by the way- And helping um, her. Yeah, helping her get over her buttons. And it's exactly like what Anthony says. Yeah, the training routines are really similar to some of the exercises and acting classes. Have you noticed that, Doug? Not only did I notice that, Anthony, that's how I justified kind of going through these strange exercises. Why am I reading from Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, man, I didn't realize it was shutting my emotions down um, as I was doing it. I felt it was right. giving me the ability to look in Marcus's eyes and confront him. And he could also say anything to me after my buttons were flattened. So I felt like I could handle things in life that would normally break me. So you can see how it seems like it's benefiting people. And even a lot of people that leave Scientology, they're called indie Scientologists. They will swear by these TRs and basic courses, never understanding how that's a setup to go under and become extremely suggestible. That's what they're really all about. And also another point, Marcus, that somebody made here, which is pertinent to Danny Masterson and why there's so much sexual abuse in Scientology, which has yet to come out is that it seems like it's just training folk yes. to be subject to abuse and not respond. Exactly. So like sexual assault, verbal abuse, mm -hmm. et cetera, and so ingrained to suppress their reactions. Unpacking yes. this when they leave must be hell. SP oh, Kitty, yes. you freaking nailed it. It is hell. It is absolutely. That's why terrible. we don't want to actually demonstrate. Andrew, yeah. Gold, Andrew Gold tried to get me to demonstrate this, and I, <sighs> I almost did it if he would have pushed a little bit longer, but thank God we didn't because it's just... Doug, I don't want to. I don't want to tear you to pieces, and you don't. I know tear you me could. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I would know. You would know right what buttons to push because oh, yeah, you know yeah. me now. You'd know right where to go, and That's I'd right. know right where to go with you. And also back to that story, Marcus. So there was this older lady, and what I laid in on her because you know, you find their button right, and they want it to be flattened. So she said, "Look, I'm overweight. Lay into my weight." So Marcus, you know, trying to be a good actor, trying to do this convincingly, not just a drill. I really pretended like I was disgusted by her weight and just, mm -hmm. she was absolutely bawling and bawling in there. And I'm, I'm like, I even said to the supervisor, I'm like, I can't keep doing this. I don't want to do this. And they go, keep, she said, keep going. And the supervisor said, keep going, flatten the fucking button. And it also turns into, you know, sexual shit. I remember, you know, seeing this when I was at the mission, Marcus, I would see, you know, girls kind of raise their top up. They would lean in, you know, with their tits against the dude so that the guy would blush. Anything goes, right? You can get invade their personal space and everything. So anyways, after a couple hours of doing this, the lady, you know, finally stopped crying and she could, Marcus, the electrified look, the hypnotized look she had on her eye where you could just tell she floated somewhere else and she just looked like a drone where she wasn't even registering anything. That is when they passed. And you could tell that she felt she was euphoric. She felt like she could overcome something, but I could see the trauma and the damage in her eyes. And that's... She, she, she passed. You must have seen millions of those, man. That you you did DRs with people all the time on staff. Did you yeah. see any sexual stuff? Did well, what I wanted to ask is what I heard did you about. I never saw any sexual stuff, but I heard that some people would take their dick out and jerk off, and uh, really? some chicks would take their tits out and put them right in front of a dude's face and stuff like that. that I never seen. saw that. I take never saw any. Dick out? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Dudes just take their dick out, and start jerking it. And, that's and, disgusting and until they're flat you know like you gotta like if that's here's here's one of the hard and fast rules in the trs how i was taught is that whatever creates the flunk mm -hmm. whatever that is you have to recreate that until that's flat otherwise Simple. you're leaving it re-stimulated there you go so like if some dude takes his dick out and you're and you're horrified and you've been doing TRs for a while and you know that's a possibility because it does say in the policy 
coach can do anything 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 um except for uh well i think it's like i think there was a point where they said no fit no like you can't hitting. touch them you can't yeah, you touch can't them touch, i don't you think. can't touch you can them. get really close though i remember leaning into people oh like yeah this, oh, I've, going I've, like this nose, you can try nose. to scare them you know mm -hmm. It, yeah. it can be jokes. It doesn't have to all be. But after a while, you know, and also, would you ever have specific people at the mission where you were told to coach them on a specific button because they wanted to flatten it? Did you ever oh, get yeah. in there and fine tune yeah. people? Yeah. Alex Merricks, I've, I've spoke about before. Right. He's a baseball player right out of high school, got uh, drafted to the Minnesota Twins. And he had, uh, he wanted the buttons flattened on the N word. So, you know, I, you know, I, I was known already for being a brutal TR zero bull bait dude. And when that. people couldn't, when people couldn't like get any more quote gains or wins out of a TR, but they, they wanted to keep the doing. <laughs> send in the wolf, dude. You were the wolf, right? <laughs> well, there were, there were a couple like Jim, Jim was also very good at it. Um, but everyone had their different, i don't know styles i don't mm -hmm. know how you would put that but no that's but well. um you know it's also i think it has a, for me at least there was a, a good amount of profiling that went into it you know if i knew the person who was doing their trs uh because i was on registration lines public division and so like i would know some history of their what they're doing on course if they had 2D problems, relationship problems, if they had family problems, if they had, you know, other problems. So, you know, if they would call me in to like get someone like push past a certain point and they couldn't get any more wins and they wanted to really hammer them, uh, yeah, they would call me in and um, I, I, with whatever knowledge I had of that person, uh, I would quickly dig to find some relevant piece of information that would be like a, a potential button. And I would just like hit it as hard as I can. And what I mean by hit it as hard as I can is I would, I would insult them. I would it, like, it's like the person says you run out of comedy pretty fast um, if, unless you're a comedian. So it, it quickly evolves into or devolves into abusive stuff and because of my uh, i think the reason that i was called in was because or, or or was one of those the wolf type people was because you know i could just pretend to be my stepdad <laughs> and just go the abusive fuck off stepdad. on people and and that's what people seem to respond to like jesus christ that's horrible like why would you say that you know or, or you know they would just they would break their TRs. They would laugh. They'd be like, that's so extreme and ridiculous that they'd have to laugh. Like someone who's done TRs uh, for a while, they're kind of tough nut to crack. They've done their two hours TR, you know, oh, eyes open blinkless, stuff. Blinkless yeah, stuff. eyes open, blinking, no blinking. And uh, like to break someone like that, like Brian, someone like Brian Dumovich or uh, someone who was an OT that was just like doing re-ups on TRs or something, uh, or had a, an action that they had to do that required some specific TRs. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it was uh, essentially just um, the, the I, I pulled a lot of my commands or whatever you want to call them as a coach doing the bull bait from from just being ha having a lot of verbal abuse myself. I understand. So. And same here, Marcus, even though I wasn't physically abused, like that asshole Ira did to you, man, I'm sorry about your upbringing, but yeah, it taught you to be a ruthless and that's a, a person. And that can be a good quality to make mm -hmm. it as a Scientologist. You kind of have to be ruthless, especially on staff and selling to celebrities, dude, which you were doing. I mean, in the military too, you, yeah, there exactly. are things that you need to absolutely be You're ruthless right. about. And that's another way that you could justify it. I'm getting mm -hmm. hardened up just like the military. It's so similar to training drills that it's pretty easy to overlook that you might be doing any kind of damage or you're being groomed or anything. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm learning how to look at, look at people. And you know, this is the, this is a, the something special that people comment on often on Scientologists that can get a newbie, ask a Scientologist, go, I don't know what you're doing. There seems to be something different about you. Now, I'm not talking about the thousand yard stare that gets inculcated into people eventually. I'm talking about their confidence, their 
How many times, Marcus, has it been commented where somebody is taken into Scientology because it seems like the Scientologists have something special? They've never met people that could look. How many people look you in the eye? You know, how many people actually duplicate what you're saying? So even right. though it's all phony and robotic, it can have an impressive effect. And it did on me when I was a kid Absolutely. and I met these people. There was something different and special about these people. I they know were, exactly what you're talking about. Right? It makes right. someone feel, I mean, you know, coming from my from from my background, when someone would actually listen and look at me, mm -hmm. like, I mean, you know, I, I you know, couldn't look, can't hardly look me in the face when he talks. And if he does, mm -hmm. there's it's like this glazed over, like he's looking through me, not at me. That's a perfect you know? way to describe the Scientologist for the TRs and exactly. They're looking through you, not at you. And it can have an impressive effect if you've never seen it before, or it can be disarming. It can be terrifying or something different, like I said. And another point on that, bro, just to show you the subtlety of like these TRs, you know. Um, so one of the things that is stressed is notice how close we're sitting when we do these TRs. So already you're violating someone's boundaries and you notice how their legs are interlocked. That's how close we were. Now, imagine this. I was tossed around as many people were with different um, coaches. Normally you twin up with the same person. They wanna have you do the same twin um, throughout the whole course, but if you don't, they'll musical chair you and some days you'll be sitting with a hot chick, sometimes you'll be sitting with an aggressive man, sweaty old man. Yeah. You, you meet everybody. <laughs> yeah, and this is another way where they'll you- Pull you Harvey like, out, they'll pull, <laughs> pull Harvey well, out. Harvey, <laughs> if you guys could see Harvey, man. Marcus, that's God another story, but he, yeah, God bless him. God, he was a really sweet guy that at the Ventura mission would get pulled in to, you know, be a coach. But the, the point is, is I felt as a kid, man, you know, I'm really nervous and shy and an introvert and I'm having to confront situations that would normally scare me. Just talking to a girl, let alone having someone that I was into across from me, bull baiting me, overcoming that. I freaking felt like I was doing something, Marcus, and I could talk to anybody and, and I could handle anything. It's also part of removing your boundaries because you do need to have boundaries in your life. And when I got out of the cult, my friends would often tell me, dude, you're a little bit too open. You know, don't you tell all in Scientology. You can't keep anything secret. You're told that if you lie or you, you can't confront anything, that's your case. So you're trying to mm -hmm. overcome your case. So um, it's actually a subtle way of removing boundaries and also the distance that these people are from each other and the musical chairs of meeting all these different people as part of um, the confusion and boundary removal. So I guess we covered the, that's it on bull bait, Marcus. I mean, that's yeah. what you do, right? As we described it, it's basically breaking Yeah, I down. mean, you know, the worst I ever experienced was, uh, and, and, and I regretted it for a long time until I reached out to Alex years after we did these drills because Alex? I was... Yeah, oh, Alex the baseball Merrick's. player. Okay. Yeah, this was the probably the worst TR zero bull bait I ever did, and um, because like he he wanted to sort of flatten this whole like idea of slavery, mm -hmm. like not just the word. He wanted it. We went through all of the TRs with that sort of in mind, you know, and he wanted in every. Of course, we did other things and there were other aspects to it. But in every drill, he wanted to address some aspect of control of a of a white man, of a white man controlling a black man. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it got to the upper indoctrination to yours, it got loud and we had to stop doing it during normal course room hours. They scheduled because he was a you know, he had got a nice fat check from the uh, baseball thing and mm -hmm. so they were making special accommodations for him as as a you know up and coming public and whatever so you know seven eight seven, 7 p.m to like sometimes 10 p.m we'd be doing upper indoctrinations i'd be throwing him we'd be fighting throwing each other across the room trying to get each other to touch the wall and and during that i cannot repeat what i would what we were saying to each other but you know I felt terrible about that. I understand until I until I reached out to him and he was, you know, uh, open and talked. And he had been out of the church for quite some time. And you know, he he was like, "No, I like this is one of those cases where I feel like I actually did benefit from that." But everything, like you know, it it, it he really did. He said that, you know, uh, that was a very uh powerful 
healing for him. Of course, because that did he felt like he could finally confront something that was driving him nuts. How did he feel when he was done with that? Did he thank you? Did it bond him more to Scientology? Did he say well, we're, we're next we still we still are very close. We don't yeah, you know, we're we're overdue for a conversation, but that's cool. Um, you still keep I mean, we're yeah, like it's one of those it's like one of those friendships where you can call somebody and, and you pitch pick up where you left off, you know. And, but but I did. I when I when I first contacted him, I apologized. I was like, I I I have been holding on to this guilt, and feeling like shit for how I treated you in these t TRs. But he and, wanted you to, and you yeah, guys yeah. both knew you were under a spell, so I'm sure you had no problem forgiving you. Well, but I he, yeah, he had no problem. He was like, dude, you need to chill. <laughs> I know, but you, I understand why you but, say that, Marcus, because he gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to the mission, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he he lost everything. No, nah, he shit. didn't lose everything. He actually got a refund. You believe that? Oh, shit. that's right. Which is a rare thing to do. Yeah, and he get. didn't get declared SP, which is how I don't know. But uh, yeah, that that was all on the TR zero bull bait. That was the worst one I ever did, and there, yeah. there were lots of others that were pretty fucking bad. Pardon my français, but right. um, you know that one was probably the worst because it was drug out over a decent amount of time and it was that particular subject and i you know i i have i take no pleasure in uh it, i took no i really didn't take much pleasure in that me neither i never liked doing the trs i just felt it was bettering my acting and my communication ability and toughen me up so i was willing to do it also you know like in the military or any kind of tough game if you overcome something that's challenging because let's not forget to do scientology is like getting a freaking phd because yeah. the courses are really hard. They take forever. And if you're slow or dumb, forget about it. You're not even going to get through the student hat. You're not going to get through any of these courses. So you definitely feel like you've overcome something just by finishing the checklist on a freaking course because they're right. all challenging. Even and then the someone comes up to read you and say, are you ready for your next action? It's like, I just finished it. I just... I'm done. There's no other no explanation. Done. Never done. There's no other explanation as we <laughs> talk about this more and more as to why I stayed in for so long, except for my critical thinking and um, mine being shut down at the very beginning, not least with these freaking TRs. This is Sante. I could be ruthless at musical chairs. A wonderful comedic. Uh... Thank you. Okay. So let's go on to TR1. That explains it. Um, and then here is the next part on the quote unquote radiant. You did real good. Thanks. Well, now I'm to the point where I can be here comfortably uh, no matter what somebody's throwing at me. Now it's time to go on to TR1, which Jesse will explain. TR1 is called Dear Alice. And what we do in TR1 is we read lines from the book Alice in Wonderland to each other. And the purpose is, is to be able to clearly read these lines as if you're saying them yourself and not reading them. What I'm doing is I'm giving Jesse some pages out of the book, Alice in Wonderland, and he'll pick phrases out of these sheets from the book. Okay, Jesse, you ready to start? Yes. Okay, start. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Okay, flunk, you look down and we're reading it instead of giving it to me. Okay. All right, start. All right. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Blunk, you were fidgeting while you were giving me the command. Start. When I'm a duchess, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Good. Pepper always makes people... Uh, okay, Flunk, you flood the command. Start. Okay. Maybe it's pepper that always makes people hot-tempered. Good. I only wish people knew that. Good. Somebody said it's done by everyone minding their own business. Okay, Flunk, you were looking down at the page again. Oh, yeah. Okay, start. Okay. Somebody said that it was done by everybody minding their own business. Okay, Flunk, you were looking off to the side. Okay. Okay, start. Somebody said it was done by everybody minding their own business. Good. Oh, uh, well, it means much the same thing. Okay, Flunk, you were looking off again. Now keep your TR0 in when you're doing this. Okay. All right, start. 
I will, it means pretty much the same thing. Good. How fond she is of finding morals in things. Good. I dare say I'm wondering why you don't put your arm around my waist. Okay, Flink, you just were fidgeting while you were giving me the command. Oh, you're right. Start. Okay. I dare say you were wondering why I didn't put my arm around your waist. Good. I'm doubtful about the temperament of your flamingo. I love okay. that one, dude. Okay, that's a pass. Thank you. Okay, now before we jump into this, Marcus, <laughs> I just wanted to ask a question that's kind of, uh, you know, a good question that uh, we should probably take up here. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, where? Well, okay, so my, my blues, there's a couple of things that I wanted to take up that the people are asking that are good questions. So what would happen? Because one of the things we hear the most, Marcus, is why on earth, with all the abuse that Mike Rinder and these people put up with, why didn't someone smack Miscavige? Um, why does somebody take this? Why don't they uh, say, why are you sitting so close to me and invading my space? Uh, I'm going to fucking leave. So what would happen if I punch the guy or lady who did that to me in a session? So Marcus, why would people not um, start fighting? Um, how, how would you explain to people why they don't get up and strike back and say, fuck you in general? Some do, but, but why, how would you explain that? Um, I would explain it kind of like uh, my situation with Dominic, where he, his quote, confront unquote, um, it was somehow impressive to me. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that he was willing to go as far as he needed to go to 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 do what he thought was right for me and helpful to me and that's what he's saying he's saying i want to help you um i think that these courses can help you and you you weren't in such good shape when you got here and you have improved and i want you to do better because they you. care they genuinely care they don't feel like they're manipulating you right i i i there are very few cases in my experience with staff members where I felt like no one cared. Right, right. Same everyone right. cared about yeah, everyone. Man. Everyone cared about you. Everyone yeah, cared dude. about your family. People care about people. Yeah. And so, yes, that conviction is something that somehow I think a human can sense. And if you're willing to go the lengths to be abused, to, 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 uh, I know this, sound, this part sounds fucked up, but to, pardon um, français, to be abused, uh, in order for someone else to get a benefit, then you have a, then, then you have a situation where a lot of people not i'm not saying this and i wish i had a, a a name to say um but people who are incredibly have an enormous amount of love in their heart yeah. and empathy and these are the people that are most you know in addition to other factors like early yeah, childhood yeah. experiences mm -hmm. that are most susceptible to this is you know it's not just early childhood experience it's not just drug abusers it's also people who are very loving and kind i'm glad you made that point because that's definitely what hooks you into well i want to help this other person so i'm willing to go through whatever it takes to help them out and, and it also, brings you closer a man that's why these people felt like my mates you know jim hammer i do whatever he told me these are my these are my best buddies they're the only people that really care about me so nobody's manipulating anybody that's part of the reason why i wouldn't stand up and beat the shit out of them now some people do leave and they you know that's why they try to get you to go under as fast as possible i've There's heard of someone getting kicked in the nuts in a session and that all sorts of things didn't I'm go not over surprised. well but but uh i tried to as i tried as to i know they stayed <laughs> like it's like marcus wow. many times especially during the book and bottle which angela uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, she said that She's, broke her. <laughs> yeah, well, it broke me too. I talked about it in one of the videos and it also, because I was able to confront it and get through it, I thanked my auditor who I was just minutes before uh, pushing out of the way so I can get the fuck out of the room. I was constantly, remember Wayne? You know, he was oh, like yeah. five feet. He's Yoda. The sweetest guy. Yoda. Yoda. He was mm. like a master auditor, kind of like the Marty Rathbun of, uh, of auditors, at least at the mission. In our little sphere, yeah. 
So I knew he cared about me and he wasn't trying to manipulate me, but I went crazy in these drills until they finally broke me. I went to an ecstatic high, which I talked about on one of the videos. I don't want to babble about it now. And that was what hooked me where I said, Wayne, thank you so much for pushing me through this. I now understand it. And I now understand why my parents got me down and, here. This is and he incredible. Cared. He and really I'm, did. I'm sure he really took that acknowledgement to heart and, and it really made him feel good. It's a win for him. That's yeah. what the auditors get out of it. They feel like they're helping. And to he probably save the wrote planet. a fucking success story, Paul Don right. Exactly. Exactly. The other reason for that, mind my, my blues, is because you know you do have the group environment. So often you're not going to want to act out if there's a group because you want to kind of keep accord with how everybody else is acting. So it does take a certain bravery and a certain moxie to actually stand up and go, fuck you. Now, I was that kind of guy. So there would be many, I can think of one thing. Jason Doring was acting on the show, Veronica Mars. He was also signed a staff contract and he was very active like Tom Cruise and trying to get us, Marcus, into staff like he was. He says, if I'm on a TV show and I can sign a staff contract, Doug and all you other able motherfuckers should be doing the same thing. So he hornswoggled me under false pretenses to come down to this huge event where there's about a hundred able Scientologists People that were clear, that were OT, that were in the business. And this is something that he got us under there under false pretenses. And I was like literally locked in a room. And until I signed that staff contract, they wouldn't let me leave. So I did stand up and I made a scene because I knew that's what it would take to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Yet I still believed in Scientology. You know, Jay, I had to take shit from Jason and a bunch of people. You definitely don't want to do that. But you can often rebel many times. But once you know that that's just your case, you can act out and still return back to the org. I hope that answers some of your question, my, my blues, but that's a, a really good question. I would say I have one last thing to the history sure. question is um, that you, you said, what would happen if I kick someone in the nuts or whatever? Well, mm -hmm. I would invite you to think about putting yourself, like do a little mental experiment. What would happen you're in a mission surrounded by Scientologists. You, at this point, you are doing Scientology. If you kick someone in the nuts, you have to think about, on a very basic level, too, like, you know, what exit am I going to get out of? Uh, how am I going to escape? Because, guess what? If you try to run out of a TR session, you will They'll be get eight you. seed. Yeah, they will come get anybody, you. They'll go to your house. There'll be kids. Everybody will be. Yeah, if you if you even get out, if you That's even true. get out. And also, Marcus, I had family in, so I didn't have the option. I have to toe the line, or I'm going to be a suppressive person and like Kelly Copter, get disconnected from yeah. my freaking family and declared an SP. That was what was keeping me in line, at least to shut the fuck up about Scientology. And then when I did take to it, I wasn't going to risk my family. Hell no. That was always my caveat. Right. So um, on TR one. Do you want to take a crack at this thing, man? Yeah, let me pull up the origination sheet here. Okay. And again, guys, here's what it says that TR1 is doing, and then we'll um, demonstrate it. But um, it's not doing anything like this, of course. And we'll show you what it's really doing after we do it. So delivering a communication. This drill teaches you to, del to deliver a communication to another person so that he receives and understands what you're asking and telling him to do. Just just because you say something to another person doesn't mean he will hear it or understand it. So you basically have to get your communication across as we covered. So what it, what would happen is I would be sitting like you guys saw earlier where our knees are touching. This is another gentleman, by the way. So that alone is very, you know, no homo, bro, you know, right off the bat. Right. So yeah. we're sitting we're sitting close to each other and I'm going to be the coach and he's going to be the student. And then we since we twin up, we turn about. So I would do him for a while and then he would do me for a while. That didn't sound right. You know what I mean? He, he would do, see all the section on the window, innuendos that Scientology is famous for programming in. Cause everything like blow, you know, um, all the words blow, sound, yeah. sound sexual, you know, yeah. either drug what oriented happened or sexual. Oh, he blew, he blew who? <laughs> blew, what else is there? Lime charge. I don't know. Everything just sounds Lime freaking charge. sexual. <laughs> okay. So do you want me to be the uh, coach Marcus? And then I'll, command well, you to start and then you give an origination yeah, it has originate. to be in a new unit of time just to just to put in just to put this into perspective so marcus has to have his previous trs in that we showed you so he has to have ot tr0 and where he can be there comfortably his mind isn't wandering his tr0 where he has to not move and sit there in a chair and look right at me and then his bull bait has to be in um which is going to be added to as we continue this gradient but all he's learning on this step is having the previous TRs in, 
and getting this communication across that he's going to read from an origination sheet that you're given. And he's going to try to, it has to be real and natural, just like in real life. Whenever you're ready, brother, I'll give you a start. All right. Give me a sec. I got the sure. sheet up. And um, also the way that I was uh, coached on this mm -hmm. was that to visualize your communication as waves, because that's what they actually mm. are. And that those you need to focus that point in a straight line so that it arrives right in front of the other person's face. Exactly. And All as right. Angela says, with intention. With intention. Correct. All right. So I'm ready. Start. I'm gonna what I am going to do long, long, interrupted. Long, fine. All right. No, um, so I'm going to uh you're gonna see me look away. That's that would be the equivalent in the drill of me looking down at the paper. Okay. And that would be a flunk. Oh, okay. So I don't that's not a flunk. You don't flunk okay, me for got that. It. All right. Okay, got it. Ready. Start. I have a pain in my stomach. Good. The room seems bigger. Flunk, you scratched your nose. They call Start. it we call that Aniton. Flunk for interrupting. You are the freaking student. I am the coach. <laughs> I feel like I'm going back to Stacy Brooke and Jesse mode, you know? At the remember the intro? It was like flunk, stop talking. You are the coach. So keep your TRs in, man. I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna flunk you for here, being bro. a coach. Okay, I'm definitely. ready. Good call. Start. I had a twitch in my leg. Excellent. I feel like I'm sinking. Very good. I feel like my leg. Good. <sighs> Flunk, you side. Start. I have a pain in my leg. Flunk, a little monotone, not quite real. Start. The room seems bigger. Excellent. I had a bigger room in my leg. Good. <laughs> so fucking weird, brother. I'm, I'm just at this point. Right. I've only got the four, so you I'm did just good. Dude. No, that's <laughs> you. Just is. I can't tell you how trip trippy that last 60 seconds was i'm trying to keep my freaking drs and to keep from <laughs> laughing or exploding because what were we thinking by doing i this? mean come sa is set two or no or no i don't know what the hell you're saying is, is that good or should we or no that's, we do more i think that's good man let's move on to the bon. next one ça c'est bon okay we oui. So again, we're going on a gradient. We're trying to be there comfortably. He can now take any bull baiting and he can get a communication across. And eventually he's going to put all these together where I'm going to try to trip him up and all this. And he's going to have to internet high up. five. Amen, bro. I don't know which side it's on. There it is. Boom. That was really good considering you haven't done these for a while, dude. I know. Very impressive. <laughs> Such a trip. I know. Okay. So we already covered what did we cover? What TR1 actually? TR1 did? and zero. Um, yeah, and you read the uh, Scientology explanation, but you, I don't know. No, yet. check this out. So you saw JC, you saw the demonstration by Stacy Brooks and Jesse Prince. You saw us just do it, and then you saw Scientology's explanation. But here again is what's actually happening. Right. So TR one, dear Alice, he was taking lines from the um, origination sheet that you get before you get the full blown, you know, Alice in Wonderland book or whatever. He just had a sheet, but those were from Alice in Wonderland. So student reads dialogue from Alice in Wonderland at coach until they get the calm, that means communication, across without embarrassment, which Marcus just did. I thought bull bait was weird. I had no idea what was in store for me. In this routine, context-free snippets from Alice in Wonderland, printed on a sheet of paper, are read by the student to the coach. Hubbard's sense of humor shows through on this one. It's even worse if the coach, get, coach gets the giggles. The humor is a relief after the stress of TR0 conditioning. However, humor, humor won't advance you on the bridge. Some of Lewis Carroll's stuff, who, by the way, Lewis was a massive pedophile, is either terribly imaginative or drug-induced, depending on your opinion of him. Some think the caterpillar and Carroll's self some think that the caterpillar is Carroll's self-portrait, but I digress. To pass this exercise without getting a permanent case of the giggles requires you to become virtually humorless. The concept of mental image pictures was introduced in TR0. Here, 
canned script from a master storyteller conjures up some fantastic and nonsensical images, which the student must refuse to process or fail the exercise. The result is robotic repetition of nonsense phrases, which in some have come, which some have come to recognize as the hallmark of what passes for conversation in Scientology. So again, under the guise of a communication course, you're being um, taught how to speak gibberish and acknowledge gibberish so that the more gibberish that you're hit with in Scientology, it won't be as shocking. This is numbing you to the absolute nonsense of Scientology speak. So rather than conditioning you for the real world where nonsense is met with questions for clarification, Ron is conditioning the mark to confront Scientology speak. Ron's writing style and propensity to make up words because he couldn't think of the real ones could give a newcomer the giggles if it were not for this exercise. Some of Ron's prose, especially the operating Thetan levels, is highly imaginative, just like Carol. So there's an example, guys, of how you can start to subtly fall for gibberish and stupid things that people from the outside can't understand. Can you see how you're being set up to accept um, gibberish? Again, in a very subtle way. So that's TR1. Now we're going to move on to TR2. And uh, we're back to Jesse and, and Now that Stacey. Jesse's passed this TR1 drill, we're ready to I'll read you a little bit about TR2 here. TR2 is known as the Acknowledgements TR. And the purpose is to teach a student that an acknowledgement is a method of controlling a person's communication and that an acknowledgement is a full stop. So we're just going to read again from the Dear Alice book. This time I'll be the coach and I'll read lines from the Dear Alice book. And Stacy has to give me an acknowledgement and the acknowledgement has to be a full stop. In other words, it has to terminate that communication and we move on to something else. All right, you ready? Yes. Okay, start. It's a mineral, I think. Okay. Flunk. I didn't, you didn't acknowledge me and you didn't confront me either when you did it. Okay. Ready? Okay, start. It's a mineral, I think. Okay. Good. Only mustard isn't a bird. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna flunk you for not acknowledging soon enough. There was a lag between the time when I was done talking and you should have acknowledged me, okay? Okay. All right, here we go, start. I quite agree with you. Thank you. Okay. I think I should understand that better. All right. Flunk, that, that wasn't really yours and it didn't seem appropriate. Okay. okay. We'll try it again. I think I should understand that better. All right. Okay, that's better, but it was a little forced and a little unnatural, okay? Okay. We'll try it again. Okay. I think I should understand that better. All right. Good. Pray don't trouble yourself to say it any longer than that. Good. Okay. He took me for his household. Okay. Good. But I better take him his fan and gloves. Thank you. Okay. That that was kind of like inappropriate. Okay. I didn't quite end it in the calm cycle there. So we'll try that one again. Okay. okay. All right. But I better take him his fan and his gloves. Okay. Good. How queer it seems. All right. Okay, that's flunk for squirming around. Okay, we'll try that one again. How queer it seems. All right. Okay, that's a flunk for not looking at me when you said it. You still have to keep your earlier TRs in. Okay, I'm getting tired of this. Okay, well, let's keep on doing it, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. How queer it seems. Okay. Okay, that's better, but it's still a flunk because it's unnatural and you're forcing yourself to do it, okay? Okay. All right, so just make it your own and just give it to me like it says here. All righty, here we go. How queer it seems. Okay. Good. But I've got to see that one mouse. Good. Okay. People don't like being ordered like that. Thank you. 
Good. That's past. Okay. And also philosophy. Yeah, there is a reason that Alice in Wonderland is used and it appertains to MK Ultra. In fact, the Mark, their meter is called Mark Ultra. I think it's like up to eight. So if you take the A and the R out of the Mark, you have MK Ultra eight. They even call their meters MK Ultra. Yeah, we go into that in the Bridge to Total Amnesia and also wow. in some of the other videos. And when, before the YouTube channel got down, I'm halfway through the next episode on season two, once we get everything else up. And it's a whole breakdown at, um, tying uh, all the signs and symbols, the Crowley part and the MK Ultra part. And just how, there's a reason that we went into the history of Scientology and it coming out of that particular era, because yeah, it is related. It's a great question, my man um okay marcus we've been going this is a we're, we're gonna wind down because we've been going for an hour and this shit's so fucking mind-numbing i gotta tell yep. you man i actually have to kind of like take a break from this stuff sure but we'll, we'll finish this one off in the way of showing um what scientology says that they're doing right so this is the acknowledgments and then we're going to show um what it really is and then maybe we'll take a crack at it or whatever um and then end off on this one i think that would probably be a good good place to end off but um, so this is acknowledgement. So again, you're just learning how to use the communication cycle. What can be the hell? What can be wrong with that? So an acknowledgement means saying or doing something to show another person you've heard them. Obviously, the purpose is to this drill teaches you to understand and acknowledge what another person says. How many times do people not acknowledge you in life? Right. When I got out of Scientology, one of the hardest parts was people not following the communication cycle and interrupting and all this shit. Right now, I, as you know, I go overboard and interrupt just to <laughs> not do the cum cycle. <laughs> it's all deprogramming guys yes. you think i'm being rude to my guest <laughs> mm. so anyways that's um you just saw acknowledgements right simple enough and here's what it actually is so acknowledgements what's really happening here coach reads dialogue as a student and he must acknowledge stop what the coach said using one of the following acts okay good thank you all right i got that fine this is the twin sister of TR1. In this installation of Hubbard's Make Money Fast series, the TR2 student acts as coach to someone being processed on TR1. The student makes positive acknowledgments in a new unit of time. That is, as if the statement and acknowledgement were being done for the first time. As an actor, I thought this was helping me be able to do uh, a line from like a script for the first time, like it was really happening. So back to that question earlier, yes, it definitely feels like it's helping out actors or whatever. The staff coach simply watches the acknowledgements of the students to see if they are believable. While this training has the ostensibly positive benefit of teaching the student to complete, quote, communication cycles, the repetitive nature of the acknowledgements can be hypnotic. The TR0 alpha state can kick in, inducing acknowledgement to statements you don't understand. Right. Right? The point Absolutely. of this training... The point of this training is to get the student to agree to any statement, i.e. hypnotic suggestion, while in alpha state. That one sentence is what this drill is all about. Absolutely. 100%. Right on this, point. Nail on right? the head. Amen. This training may help you survive the day with your precocious three-year-old fantasies, but it can be counterproductive when listening to a used car salesman like Hubbard. Acknowledging nonsense is not required in the real world. Ron's real purpose in this TR is to get the mark used to the idea of accepting off-the-wall statements as facts. As the mark proceeds up the bridge, increasingly dissonant ideas are introduced, culminating in Hubbard's full-blown cosmology and operating Thetan level. And philosophy, like you were talking about earlier, about Alice in Wonderland being used for um, in the as a programming script, like they were using for in the MK Ultra projects. Yeah, absolutely. It's designed to set you into a new weird reality so that. Because Scientology is very much like being in Alice in Wonderland eventually. I mean, that's, that's a perfect description and why it feels like such a mind trip when you get out of it. So if it's happening on the gradient subtly with these communication drills, perhaps you can see why people start to have their mind shut down and accept the gibberish as they go on. Do you want to give this one a shot, Marcus, as the final exercise here? Or We can. You... It's totally silly, superfluous. Exactly. What is it? Goofy. Not... Ignore, yeah, but give it a shot. I want to see if you, after all these years, if you're able to do it. I'll throw up the, um, you can just grab um, some, yeah, this will be perfect to end off at. So we actually, you know, have the book Alice in Wonderland. And the very first chapter, ironically enough, is down the rabbit hole. So uh, what we what we have is uh, Marcus. Fuck. So let's say, I know. It's six, six back six humor, We're man. <laughs> dead, brother. I know, right, dude? What the fuck is wrong with this? Oh. Can we see this? <laughs> Talk about blowing charge by doing these videos. Okay, brother. So we have this freaking book, right? 
And again, irony of ironies, we didn't recognize that the first chapter was down the rabbit hole. Um, and Marcus, so I'm the, I'm the coach and he's the student. So he would just pick a line from, I'll, I'll pull it up, Marcus, so you can see it. All right. But he would you're just gonna, pick the line. Acknowledge, you're going to do the acknowledgements. Do you mind fucking? I don't uh, mind. Let's see. So if I'm going to be, okay. So if I'm going to be the coach, then just you're scroll down a little bit so I can grab a few. Yeah. Scroll down. Actually, you don't even have to Marcus. Cause if I'm the coach, uh -huh. um, you just have to acknowledge my gibberish. Okay. You're, okay, you're not I'll, saying the gibberish. I'll acknowledge. Okay. All right. So Marcus briefly on, see, said the gibberish in the other one, right? So he's learning how to take a line from Alice in Wonderland, make it his own, and get it across to another person. And then this one, he's learning how to acknowledge gibberish. So whenever you're ready, I, I don't have you on screen because I got to keep this Alice thing pulled up here. But okay. um, I'm, I guess I'm I'll ready. just listen to you. Okay. So again, we just started the I'm first confronting the, uh, the audience. Okay. Let me actually throw this up here. Okay, man. Oh my God. So I'm going to find a, a line from Alice in Wonderland and I'll just start saying it to you. And you have to give me a proper acknowledgement. Oh dear. Oh dear. I shall be too late. I got that. Good. There's not a ton of dialogue here. Orange marmalade. I understand. <laughs> Sorry, man. I flunked as a coach. Flunked for myself. But good. Pass for you. Here's another line. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to an end? I understand. Good. I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time. I don't know. Good. I must be getting somewhere near the center of the earth. Uh, Flunk, calm it. lag. Yeah, Flunk. I'm losing it. <laughs> Fair enough. I understand. I must I be mean, getting flunked. You interrupted. Start. I must be getting somewhere near the center of the earth. I got that. Good. Yes, that's about the right distance. But then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Well, there you have it. Fucking fantastic, dude. That was excellent. Very much your own. Very Flunk. much Jim Hammery. <laughs> Flunk inside in it's true. That's the registrar that trained this man so well. Flunk for interrupting. Start. I wonder if I shall fall right through the earth. Okay. Flunk, not enough kind of um in that was an inappropriate Didn't feel acknowledged. response. Yeah, exactly. Didn't feel acknowledged. Inappropriate response. Start. I wonder if I shall fall right through the earth. I understand. Good. One more, man, because this is driving me nuts. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? <laughs> it's a tough one, right? Because you have to actually acknowledge it, right? Well, yeah. You have to yeah. say one or the other. Or, well, let me. And what's me going on in your fucking brain while you're trying to exactly. keep all of these things, these right. concepts together is uh, a mental gymnastics exercise all on its own. I'm noticing you're getting that, bro. Total, just redoing this. Yeah, you're getting all of this like nonsense and exactly. you have to acknowledge it. Yeah. And it's... this is exactly uh, how in the uh breakdown that you read uh that i said hit the nail on the head uh, tr1 and tr2 and an acknowledge state acknowledging gibberish and a you start to this is where you start to begin to sort of zone the fuck out and yes where do i go to sign up for my next course jim what do, okay yeah where do i sign i got that so and here it, it is. also it, opens oh, up the way for people to say you know because you're being flunked in a in a setting that's sort of considered to be like a learning space, then when you exit the course room and you start interacting with other terminals that have been trained this way, then they can start to be like, you know, that comm wasn't appropriate, you know, or that wasn't an, that wasn't an acknowledgement, or you know, I don't I, like I need a, an, an actual acknowledgement, not a half acknowledgement. Um, like, are you going to be on course tomorrow? What time? Uh, six 30. Uh, I don't know. It probably. Okay. That's a half act. And I need, I need a, I need you to remember your TRs and acknowledge that you're going to be on course at six 30. Okay. Man, this is how I used to talk with my family. This is all we talk. And mm -hmm. after a while, you only want to hang around other people that talk like this because right. it separates you from the real world. It doesn't. I got that. Talk. Yeah. 
I mean, well, let's stop. Let's stop. You want you want to stop? Oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, we really... gotta we gotta do this. We just gotta finish this last one. Oh, I want to see okay. if you can actually acknowledge this one properly. Okay. Oh, a, okay. It, this is gonna take all your skill to get this. One. Okay. Just, just one more, man. Okay. So I'll give that. I'll give. I'll repeat the auditing command. So start, please, ma'am. Is this New Zealand or Australia? I understand. Flunk. I don't feel like you answered the question. Like there was an acknowledge a proper acknowledgement. Start. Okay. Please, ma'am, is this is this <laughs> flunk for myself? Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? <sighs> flunk, calm lag. You're gonna get it. I know. I feel it. Please start. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? Australia. Pass. There you go. So there you go. Uh, it, once he does it for a while and, it, and he can consistently give a proper acknowledgement without flunking in between, then he passes. And you can see the Ron droid being made step by step. I'm going to need to go take a shower after this, dude. <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> that was kind of hard. To, that was kind of weird to do. Just puts me right back in that shit. Um, guys, that's pretty much it. We're going to end off there. We'll be continuing on, um, not necessarily the next episode, because we have a lot of ideas, um, including deep diving into Scientology's roots, where the study tech came from, all sorts of interesting stuff. But we will be we will be bouncing back and forth um, on episodes to continue, you know, up this bridge to total amnesia. Not so much to get people into this, to you know, and feels like a math lesson, I guess, you know, studying all this shit. But mostly to point out mind control techniques that might be applicable to other groups and situations other than just Scientology. He happens to have created kind of the best, I think, mind control trap out of a lot of them. But these techniques are used everywhere in advertising, um, in the schooling system, in other cults uh, like the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, etc. So anything you wanted to say, Marcus, before we end off? And I'm going to well, crawl through. Well, I can throw this uh, tab up for uh, some music. Uh... Oh, perfect. But so of course, I got, oh yeah, we're not going to do Going Clear as the outro. We always do a song before we end off to kind of uplift the mood. Is this such an uplifting song? Oh, it is. This is uh, Tim Norris. He's a, um, from Alabama. This is something we produced. Is it you? Uh, no, no. It's something that I produced with my friend Dale. Um, he's, a, he's an artist from Southwest Louisiana. And uh, he's, he grew up in Alabama in the 60s during the... Uh, well, all of the uh, uh, bombings that were happening in the mm -hmm. uh, during the civil rights era, and he became a pastor and a preacher. And he's an old blues man. And uh, that we we have a mini documentary, but this is just a song called "My Little Hoochie Coo." To sort of that's uh, what it's called, "My Little Hoochie Coo." Yeah, that's funny. So uh, if you got it up, I'm ready to play. Okay, let me just make sure real quick that we don't have any burning questions that just scrolling through your room. Oh, thanks, man. And Star, thanks for showing up, you know, anytime. We're willing to be guinea pigs for the sake of education. <laughs> All right, we ready? Okay, hit it, brother. <laughs> Thank you. 
fashion Navaway. No short skirt, but all the fellows, they still want them dirt, but they know she's my little hoochie-coo. She knows left and right up from down, I'm so glad that I have found my little hoochie-coo. But I really like the way she rocks That my little hoochie coo She wears that apron way up high But she never fails to catch my eye She my little hoochie coo When that morning sun come up But there's breakfast on my plate Now look at baby But I love my baby, yes I do Without her around I wouldn't know what to do She might have did old hoochie coo She wiggle like a tadpole, jump like a frog I never drink muddy water or sleep in a log She might have did old hoochie